Welcome to the AdSense Flippers Podcast. Are you sick and tired of gurus who have plenty of ideas but are short on substance? Worried that ebook you bought for $17.95 won't bring you the personal and financial freedom you long for? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in their pursuit of niche profits without the bullshit. Straight from your hosts, Justin and Joe of AdSense Flippers. Welcome to episode 31 of the Ads and Slippers podcast. I'm your host, Justin Cook, and I'm here with the man, the plan, Joe Hot Money Magnati. What's up, buddy? What's up, everybody? I've also, as a much further down the totem pole <laughs> position, who has a new intro? I've got John DeVries here. What's up, boss? I don't have an intro. I was going to come up with a good one, and I totally forgot. You got so nothing, I'm man. you lame again. Oh, sweet Lord. All right, man. Well, let's get right into our news and updates to get started. First thing is we've got some new ideas iTunes reviews, buddy. Pretty fired up about it. Yeah, throw them at us. So we've got a five-star review from Chris. He says, this podcast is a great value in each episode. Most importantly, it's all experience-based and actionable. No pie-in-the-sky talk, just concrete content and entertaining matter. Highly recommended. Thanks, Chris. We try. Appreciate it, buddy. Next one is from Dave. He says, it's been over two years I've been following your blog, and I still remember your first podcast. You guys give great info on each podcast, and I love your free model. You guys truly give back to the internet marketing community. David from Jerusalem. Cool, David. Appreciate it, man. Shalom. <laughs> oh, so, my goodness. <laughs> so our first news and updates. We've got a 99 Designs contest up for our site redesign. Yeah, buddy. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm really pumped about it. Yeah, you know, originally we kind of talked about it. We said, you know, why waste all that money on, like, redesigning the site? It's not really that important. But, you know, we talked about it. And, like, any new readers or potential listeners that come across our site and they see, you know, this admittedly horrible design and it, like, turns them away from, like, potentially good content, helpful content, that kind of sucks, right? Yeah, I'm really excited just to see what people submit and what kind of new ideas we get coming in, so... Yeah, it's always scary too, because I mean, we're putting out, we're gonna have a guaranteed, you know, contest. So with a guaranteed contest, it's like, uh, if I don't get great designs, yeah. we got a good plan though. With 99 Designs, we're gonna have you chasing down some of the good designers and inviting them to our contest. We're probably also gonna send an email out. There's gonna be a link to it in the show notes. I'd recommend checking it out, specifically the design brief. It'll give you some good insights into kind of like what we're looking for as far as conversions and in the design. I, th- I think you'll like it. It will be a private contest, so you won't be able to see the entries unfortunately and we do that so that you know designers can't just copy each other and make small changes and that kind of thing and it attracts a higher level of designer so he knows that his designs won't be copied next update this last weekend i went to deval bloggers weekend boot camp it's pretty cool is at the malagos resort just outside of deval had a bunch of people from all over mindanao 85 attendees came they had two different tracks for one was for new bloggers and one was for experienced bloggers so I spoke with the uh, experienced bloggers, talked about monetizing niche blogs. So kind of just broke it down, went into it. It was funny because a lot of them, you know, they were taking notes and like... What'd you discuss? I haven't really even talked to you about this. I've talked to them about niche sites and how they can actually make money. I mean, really, to make a livable wage here in the Philippines, I mean, if they had 25 to 30 sites up, they could make a livable wage and do well with it. So it's something I'd really like to see. And we went ahead and put that up and, you know, talked to them about it. Also talked to them about their AdSense placement and like spam versus non-spam. And mm-hmm. that was really interesting. A lot of them, you know, were thinking that they could copy articles from easily articles or spin (laughs) stuff. I mean, because they've had a lot of marketers, a lot of them are VAs, right? So they've worked with marketers in the US and they are the ones spinning, right? They are the ones doing all this content stuff, a lot of the spammy stuff for guys in the US. So that they're kind of like, isn't that what you do? But just because a lot of people are doing it wrong, you know, doesn't mean that they should do it. So it was pretty cool to like talk to them about how they could make some money with their blogs. And there were some good bloggers there, like Ria Jose is a pretty well-known Deval blogger. She was pretty sharp. I got to talk with her a little bit at school. The, uh, the social media guy for the U.S. Embassy came down. I got to talk to him a bit. He's done some really good stuff on their Facebook page. So that was pretty cool. That's cool. I mean, you're in, the, you're in a part of the world where that little, you know, talk that you gave can make a pretty significant contribution into the lives of some of those people that there so that that's pretty neat yeah it's cool it's like one of our like reach out efforts like you know it might be silly but like if we can make a difference in like the people locally in Davao right it's like we can make a big change we can affect big change in a smaller community um, where they're still kind of like they were having discussions about you know blogging and like what the ethics are behind blogging things that 
that we struggle with in the US, but that we were kind of, you know, past a bit. And so it was really interesting to hear their conversations. There was one girl, she does uh, video blogging, vlogging, and uh, she does it, she runs a site called uh, mykoreanboyfriend.com. It's kind of a silly site, but like, she has a ton of views, right? And she does this whole like, you know, her boyfriend making her eat kimchi and whatever. She's got a ton of visitors. But the funny thing is like, she's kind of a cute girl. I figured like she'd have, you know, lots of men that kind of like her site. No, it's mostly women. She knows her audience. It's like 18 to 24 year old Filipinas um, that are looking to her for ideas on how to act with foreign guys. So she knows and targets her content to her audience, really cool. That's something we were talking about today. Mm. But it was interesting, I just thought maybe she did it, you know, I'll just be a pretty girl and do pretty faces or whatever, and like people will like it, but no, she knew what she was talking about, it was cool. I have so many things I have to say, and I'm not gonna say any of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at Joe, he's looking at me. Yeah, my Korean boyfriend, okay. Yeah, so uh, next <laughs> number four. <laughs> now, it's pretty cool, check it out, man. Next point, we have an upcoming intern opportunity. So, John, you're leaving us next month, buddy. Ish. A ish, I'm maybe. you ish. So, yeah, October, you're heading back to the States, and the plan is to probably bring you back like January, February, and we're going to have you move on to other portions of our business and try to expand that, take a larger role in our company. In the meantime, though, we are looking, we will be looking to bring out another intern. Specifically, you know, are some of the ideas here are like kind of content management because we have some new content ideas we want to start talking about and moving into. So this person will help us with that. And then niche project management. We have a lot of like side projects that we want to flesh out. And so this person will be responsible for setting up the testing parameters and expanding those tests. Yeah, I'm excited to expand the intern program. And obviously it's been a overwhelming success with you. Thanks buddy. So looking forward to getting another guy in the door and have him work a little closely with you, Justin, and see how that, how that goes. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, so stay tuned, everybody, for that special offer. All right, so that's it for the updates. Let's get right into the heart of this week's episode. The AdSense Flippers Podcast. So we're talking this week about seven actionable ideas for the marketing challenge. And this really kind of stems from a couple of things. I mean, the first thing is, Joe, I mean, we've talked to business owners pretty often where they have this great idea, this really like, you know, detailed plan for how they're going to build a tool, a product, a company. Sometimes they've even gone through and like been spending money and time building it out. But when you ask them what their plan is for sales, they go, ah, you know, AdWords. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna blog, I'm gonna put a couple of blog posts and they're gonna go viral. Yeah, the funny thing is, is like even, uh, some will have even a prototype. Like if it's a physical item, we've met people that have a prototype, a functional working product, and we're like, how are you gonna sell it? And they have, yeah, no idea basically. And, sometimes, and they've done no, no market research either. Yeah, and sometimes that kind of an amazing product. But the thing is, you can have the most amazing product in the world, but if no one ever sees it, hears about it, well, it's, you know, a tree falls in the woods, right? I mean, you could have the next, the second version of Facebook, you could have the next eBay, but if no one ever gets to see it, use it, tell their friends about it, who cares? Yeah, this is sort of a, a selfish topic for me, right? When we were talking about this earlier, particularly relevant for me, because I'd much rather stare at my text editor, edit lines of code, than get out there and talk to people. It's really important, right? Well, yeah, you're kind of the second group. So, you know, the other group are people who like, can build things and they love to be like kind of behind the scenes and knocking it out, but don't really know what first steps to take to kind of put themselves out there and start marketing their business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can see how that would be frustrating. Like, you know, you're like, okay, well, do I focus on the marketing or do I just kind of worry about building my product to be better? You know what I think a big part of the challenge for me is that it's hard, it takes a long time to start seeing a return on your investment, right? So I feel like I'm investing a lot of hours and not seeing a lot happen up front. So I think that's a big hurdle, at least for some people anyway. Working for pennies. Yeah. That's what it feels like. No, I understand. Absolutely, and but that's why your whole mindset has to shift, right? I mean, that's what you were talking about earlier, Justin, which is, you know, you have to realize that as the business owner and as the creator of this product, service, or idea, your whole job is to market the business. If you don't have a way to tell other people about your offering, if you're not comfortable doing it, or you don't have a way to do that through like a captured audience or something, then you don't have a business. Mm -hmm. Like that is your business. Making connections, reaching out to other people, having them experience your service or try your product. I mean, that 
that's your business. If you can't do that, there's nothing there. Sure. So I think a mindset, yeah, shift needs to happen where you understand that that is a part of your business and without that, there is no business at all. And I think one of the first things you need to do is to define your audience, right? So that's kind of a vague, non-actionable tip, but let me see if I can break that down a little bit. Like one way people talk about doing it is to like create an avatar. And maybe it's you, maybe it's someone who likes this, doesn't like that, is this age group that, you know, has these feelings about, you know, maybe I hate internet marketers in general, but I like free stuff. Or maybe I Yeah, when you say avatar, like the first thing I think of is like that movie guy, or something? Well, not the movie, that little guy I have, like that little picture of me in the forum. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's not what you mean though. No, right? no, you I mean, mean the average I mean, user. I mean like product. an actual dude or dudette that is, you know, sitting at home on their computer or they're out, you know, shopping at the Walmart or whatever. Like that is your guy. That's the person you want to reach. There's one person out there and he fits the, you know, archetype for your marketing. The right? average user of your product or service. The exact, the perfect typical user, not, you know, kind of a blend, but like the exact person. So if you're struggling with that, if you're struggling to kind of create the avatar, do something like this, right? Talk about who's not in your market. Right, like who is your customer not? Yeah. Right, so with ads and slippers, right, a customer for us would not, it'd not be someone who has no technical capability. Yeah. If they're not able to get into WordPress, if they're not able to, you know. Grandma who bakes cookies at home, just, probably not gonna be converted into building a niche site empire. Yeah. Yeah, someone, no matter how easy we make it. Someone who likes the big product launches and they kind of follow like the big gurus, probably not in our audience, right? There might be a few of them, but like that's not really the stuff, kind of things we talk about. We're not big on the news there. So, you know, they're not really our audience. So like, you know, by talking about the people that your audience is not, you can kind of, okay, these people are not in it. No, okay, there's everyone else. There's a common thing whenever you have a product or service and you're asked like, who is my audience? Well, it's everybody, right? Everyone can buy my product or service. It's I'll take any customer. But that's really not true when you start discounting people that shouldn't be in your audience, yeah. right? And the cool thing is like, when you're talking, when you're in a podcast or you're doing your blog post, and you specifically say, these people shouldn't listen to me, shouldn't read my blog, shouldn't do that, it makes the people that should like that much more interested because they go, cool, I'm not that guy either. Right. Like, you know, your avatar, that dude or dudette is like, oh my God, that's retarded. I totally agree with that. And they're going to like it more. Yeah. Right. So you're going to bring, you're going to have a closer connection with those people. Another thing to look at is who are your customers? Who have you done work with? Who do you connect with? You know? Yeah. I love this one because it's so easy to figure out who's paid you before and who you've done business with and who you work well with and kind of, you know that that's a good starting point for your audience and your market. Yeah, so like we realized pretty early that with our outsourcing company, working with individual internet marketers was not a good idea. That didn't work, so that would not be our audience for outsourcing, right? Because it just doesn't work, right? They want too much for too little or it's just not a good fit. So looking at who you've served and it worked out with or didn't work out with is a really good place to start. Yeah, an example of that working for TriBPO would have been our medium-sized businesses. Those companies that are not so big that, you know, they need 50 people or 100 people. I mean, that would just be a huge deal. But six people, 10 people can make a huge difference to their bottom line. Those are the kind of businesses that are perfect for our outsourcing team. Here's another thing you can do, right? And this is still kind of like just framing it a bit, but I look at the competition from your new avatars angle or your new target markets angle. And what you can do is you can steal the things that they're doing well and you can point out and differentiate yourself from the things they're doing poorly. Mm -hmm. Right, so an example of stealing something that was done well that we did, like Pat Flynn, right? He has income reports and they're quite popular. I thought they were really interesting. They spoke to me. So I said, hey, we're gonna steal that. Sorry, Pat, we're, we're gonna steal your income reports because I think it's really cool. I love the open and honest framework of how he does that. But we've differentiated ourselves from like other marketers that are like constantly like promoting Ebooks or whatever. I mean, in our intro, we talk about the you know the seventeen ninety five ebook that isn't gonna you know get you the the things you're looking for. Well, we differentiate ourselves from those marketers because we don't want them in our audience, right? They don't match who we want and who listens to us anyway. So I think it's good to differentiate yourself from the things that other people are doing poorly and really steal or grab onto the things that people are doing well 
based on the framework of your avatar. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now that we've talked a little bit in the intro about like how you need a mindset shift, how to define your audience, how to look at the competition and steal the good and differentiate yourself from the bad. Let's go over the seven points that we really wanted to communicate. The first one is to get interviewed by people who have interviewed your competition, right? So for example, in our case, right, we would look at other podcasts. The first place to look is backlinks, right? So if someone interviewed Pat Flynn, for example, Mm -hmm. right, it's really good to reach out to them and see if they'll interview us. The problem with that is sometimes you might have a really high level blog or podcast that's interviewed Pat that you reaching out as a new blog or a new marketer is not probably going to work. Yeah. So you're trying to target those secondary and tertiary uh, blogs out there that are in still in your realm, still in your your niche that would be willing to interview, that would be willing to have you on the air. So us, you know, non-marketers, this is something we like to do is make spreadsheets. So what you can do is you can take a look at the people backlinking to Smart Passive Income that have interviewed him, either through a blog post or whatever, or, you know, like a back and forth or a podcast, Mm -hmm. right? And then rate them on two different things. First, how big is their audience? Second thing is how relevant is their audience to your target audience? So any of the ones that have a really large audience, I wouldn't target them first. I would go to like low to mid-level audience size, Mm -hmm. but that have very high relevance to my target customer, my target market, right? Those are the people that I want to target first. Now they interviewed, you know, that person interviewed Pat, but they have a relevant audience to you. They probably just don't know about you, your blog or what you're doing. Sure. So reaching out, making that connection with them, say, hey, loved your interview with Pat Flynn. I thought this, this, and this were great. I really want to do this. Like that's a way we can do it. But you know, this works for any industry. Yeah, it really does. Because if you have a podcast, you know, you're always struggling a couple of topics. So if someone approaches you for an interview and they're an easy guy to talk to and they're interesting, hey, that makes for an easy podcast episode. Free podcast. Right. Yeah. Another thing you can do is, and this is the second point, is again, looking at the backlinks to your competition, see about who's talking about them, see about you know who likes them. Now you're gonna come across a lot of blogs that maybe you know mention them as kind of you know offhand or whatever. Sure. But again, if they have an audience that's closely tied, and always keep your avatar or your target market in mind, but what you can then do is go to their blog and start commenting. Like get involved in the discussion, reach out to the blog owner. And again, you can rate these as well, but like try to build a relationship there with those other bloggers that are talking about your competition. Yeah, and this is a great way to get your name out there for people to start to understand who you are, that you really do know what you're talking about, to exchange information and ideas with others. I mean, a lot of people have used AdSense flippers to find each other in the niche site creation business, and then they communicate with each other directly. Yeah. We're not involved anymore, right? Yeah. So you should use that as a marketing strategy to go out there and find these other blogs that exist. The third point is to systematize your marketing efforts, right? Now, you know I love machines. So this, when you did this, Justin, it made marketing for me a lot easier. Because I have to say, when we first started marketing ads and slippers, I was like, it was just too much for me to handle. And then breaking it down like this and kind of saying, okay, this is what we're going to do on a daily week level, a weekly level, and a monthly level, made it so much easier to kind of understand and swallow than just say, oh, we're going to go out there and get our name out there. We're going to market AdSense Flipper. God, we're such dorks. I'm almost embarrassed to talk about this. But the truth is, we're not Clay Collins, right? We're not like the marketing you know, masters where like we know how to do these things. We kind of had to fumble through it and like systematizing things makes it easier for us. Yeah, well, I think otherwise it's kind of overwhelming, at least for me. Like, I sit down and it's like, okay, what, do I go comment somewhere? Do I post something somewhere? Do I send an email to someone? Like, I could do anything. And so I have no idea what to start doing, you know, in the beginning. Yeah, so for us, I'm just going to say this. Yeah. So this is what we did. So we said, okay, Joe, you have to do, what was it, like five comments a week on the Warrior Forum. They can't be just, hey, great idea. Like, they have to be substantial. They have to be useful. You have to every week comment on nichepursuits.com. Right. And then like Chris Guthrie's site, right? right. And Lifestyle Business Podcast. And we, we had like a bunch of blogs that we targeted 
that we said, okay, you have to make a comment once a week on these blogs, and then I would take the other blogs or whatever, right? Yeah, and eventually what that does is it gets you involved in threads that you actually care about. I mean, you wind up finding good ones. Sometimes they suck and, you know, you move on and whatever, but sometimes you find good threads where people are talking about it for then you're actually interested in what's being said. And it, it forces you to find their good content too. Like you read one post and you're like, oh, that doesn't really speak to me or whatever. So you have to go find another post. And then ultimately, right, what happens is if, if you keep, uh, you know, doing that on their blog and like none of it is really related to you, well then, you know, or your audience, then you know you should move on anyway. You shouldn't be commenting yeah. on their blog anyway. Yeah, you get to understand the blogger and understand the whole platform a little bit better um, than you would normally. So. so yeah, systematizing the process by setting daily and weekly requirements on where you need to comment and add value, valuable, yeah. you know, comments or messages or suggestions is one of the ways that we did it. I think it works for any market, not just ads and filters site stuff. The fourth point is to help people in forums and communities where your target customers are. So it's similar to you know the blog commenting or the systematizing, but it's a little bit different. When you look at your competition, you see that there are some backlinks coming from, let's say, a forum, and they've got you know a bunch of signature links kicking back to them there. And let's say it's about you know. I sell auto parts, my uh, competitor sells auto parts, and we see there's an auto parts forum for like enthusiasts, right? So I go there and I've never logged into this forum before. What you don't wanna do is log in and start like dropping links and talking about your business. Forum owners hate that. And it just, you're just kind of a miserable person if you do that anyway, mm -hmm. right? So the best thing to do when you're joining that kind of forum is to get in and start providing value. So here's what I think you should do. Join the forum. Fill out your information, you know, so a complete profile, and then use the search function to find people talking about something that you know well. Mm -hmm. So if you know about some particular... Answer questions. I mean, if it yeah, was you, an you, auto part thing and you knew, knew about fixing ignitions, look for people asking questions on ignitions and help them figure out how to fix their ignition. And then people will naturally see you as an expert in ignitions. Yeah, yeah, and here's the thing. You're not like linking to your blog, oh yeah, I wrote about that here. No, 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 right. like help them in the forum, right? Because now you're helping the forum owner because it's cool, you're adding like unique content for them, mm -hmm. you're furthering the discussion, you're helping their readers. Honestly, a lot of forum owners will reach out to you if you're doing this a lot and like being really helpful in their forum. Yeah, I actually did this not that long ago. I think. One thing you can do is not only answer questions, but also put up your own, you know, threads into a forum. And a great topic for those would be like when you have a problem that takes you like two or three hours to solve, and it, it's really irritating because you are just jammed up with this issue. Like I wanted to create a PayPal button and have PayPal auto redirect to a page. It took me like three hours to figure out. I was really irritated. I did a bunch of searches. I couldn't figure it out. So I made a big like screenshot post in Warrior Forum, and like a bunch of people thanked me. Like, hey, thanks. I've been looking for this all over the place. And I've gotten a little bit of traffic from that. You know, it took a, a while to create, but you know, it was worthwhile. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people discuss like whether you should put that on your own site or you should put it somewhere else. And honestly, it's good to put it somewhere else, especially when you're just starting off. And here's the thing: like when you're starting off a blog, or you have your site, and you don't really let's say you don't have any customers. I've had eight people buy my product or service, and I don't have like a great customer base to pull or anything. If you're in these forums where enthusiasts hang out and like people that are in your niche or community are, I mean, that's a great way to get connected before you have customers. You can test kind of the market. But once you've established yourself there, you can kind of ask them or just read different threads to find out what they're talking about, what they're interested in. Yeah. And that will help you determine what products you should have, what pricing you should have. Yeah, I also feel like blog posts are a little more formal, a little bit longer. Maybe they have to be more like, you know, 2,000 words, where a forum post can be a little more informal. Sure. You know, you can afford to make mistakes in forum posts. You know, you, you can do that kind of stuff, whereas on your blog, you have to be a little more careful. Yeah, but I really think that, like, you know, providing as much value as you can in a forum, really helping people without, like, being spammy or miserable is a great way to start reaching out to your target audience. Use a search function, find things you know they're talking about that you know well, and get into it with them, right? Yeah. Most forums have some sort of social proof barometer on the side, right? Like thanked a certain amount of times, or liked, or whatever. Like, you should have more thank yous than 
you know, comments or whatever the case may be. So now just one warning here, you might want to limit your time a bit because like I've done some deep diving in like the warrior form and just like, I don't want to shoot myself in the head. I read these threads that are like, like there's all these people that are commenting and like they're doing it to build up their post count so they can then go sell a WSO. Cause now I've got, you know, a hundred posts and I look like I know what I'm talking. Oh, I just want to, it's miserable. So make sure that you, if you're doing this right, stay on topic, get in there, search for the specific subject subject, spend time crafting the value, but not getting distracted. Yeah. With whatever stupid threat. The easiest thing for me too, is like, once you find something interesting or even a slightly distracting, I mean, you can, everybody knows you can waste an hour on the internet looking up really dumb I, stuff. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. Not good. You end up on Wikipedia for right. half a day. Exactly. Okay. Now for our fifth point. You know, John, was, you were asking the question about like, you know, how much should you be reaching out and how much should you be writing content on your site? And so I gave you kind of a ratio when you're just starting out. 70% yeah. in outreach and 30% on your own site content. Now that's gonna change over time, but really you should be providing uh, value elsewhere with most of your time, but don't neglect your blog. I'll give you an example, there was a guy and he was posting the warrior form in other places and on his site, he would always have like a link to a site in his signature. And on his site he says, you know, I won't start posting my process or whatever it is that he was doing to make money until I get to like 2000 email subscribers. And I thought to myself, that's kind of, a, you know, that's yeah. a toolish move, dude, right? Like yeah. I'm not gonna release my information until you meet my criteria, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But you were a bit surprised by that ratio. I mean, you thought that ratio was a little high or? or no, something? no, I thought that was reasonable. I just, for me, when I sit down and I have an hour to work on something, it's always like, well, do I write more content? So people, when they get to my site, they have something to read and consume, or do I try and get it out there more? And so Justin and I had had some conversations about, you know, which one should you be doing and how much. And so I just thought an actionable number would be good. Yeah, if you don't have customers or you don't have an audience or whatever it is that you're trying to build on your own site, like just constantly putting out content and waiting for people to come, I think is not a very good strategy. That's when you end up working for pennies, John. But if you go to places like forums where, you know, it's niched down to your target market, it's your people that are talking about things that are interesting to your business, like there you can go reach out and talk to them there. You can help them there. That you don't have to be spammy and drive them back to your site all the time. You can just help them there and then you'll make a name for yourself, right? Yeah, you have to build a reputation first. I mean, otherwise people are gonna come and it's possible that you could create such an interesting blog that people would just come there and it would spread by word of no, mouth. No, it's more about, it happens, but not for you. Yeah. <laughs> not, that's the exception and not the norm, I think, right? Yeah, so. and I, so you have to, and this is not gaming the system. I mean, this is how the system is supposed to work. You're supposed to go out there, you're supposed to help people, you're supposed to talk about stuff so that people really do say, okay, John knows what he's talking about. He really does give good advice. Now I will go back to his blog and read his original content and information. Yeah, if you're, let's say John, for example, you're posting in the warrior forum or dynamite circle and you're talking to a bunch of internet marketers and you start to show off your design and programming chops and you say, oh, you can do this, this, and this, and you're just helping people, you'll get a name for yourself as someone who knows that side of the business, right? Sure. And people that, that don't know it as well will start to come to you or look to you for advice and that type of thing, right? And eventually, they're gonna make their way to your blog. So proving your chops in places where your target audience is, is best. If they're not with you yet, you don't neglect your blog, still post, but spend more of your efforts reaching out. So the sixth point is a little controversial. Joe's gonna hate me for this one. But you know, I suggest forgetting about the money and focusing on helping other people. Like if you're helping people for money, like that's your primary goal and you don't really like to do it, but you're just hoping that it'll make you money in the long run, people will see through that, right? So you have to actually, it's a mindset shift again, but you have to actually realize that helping and supporting others makes you money. And this is, you know, if you're an employee in a company, right, the more value you can provide your business, the more value you can provide for your business, for their customers, the more valuable you are within the organization. It's the same way in business. Yeah, I don't hate you for this one, Justin, but at the same time, you know, it could happen, and hopefully it won't, but it could happen that you could spend 40 hours, you know, two weeks, a month, without making any money because you totally forgot about the objective of a company, which is 
to make profit. So don't totally discount that. You know, have a pathway to be profitable. Stick to those rules. Absolutely help people without the focus being money all the time because they will, like you said, see through that and you will become very kind of. It, it just kind it's of icky, it's yeah. disingenuous. Right. It's like you know, okay, well. He's providing a little bit of value, but he wants me to pay this, pay that, do this, do that. It's just kind of irritating, right? right? You know, I wouldn't haggle over stupid amounts of money, you know, tripping over dollars to pick up pennies. Like, you're working with a guy right now, I won't say, but whatever. You're working with a guy that has good potential connections for you. Like, he's pretty well connected, experienced in the industry, and you're helping him out. I'm helping him find a developer. And doing that relationship, you're not getting paid for that, but building that relationship is could be pretty important, right? I mean, you can help him out in lots of ways. There's good synergy there. So not haggling over the two or 300 bucks you might have charged him for that, I think will ultimately pay out in the long run. You know, time will tell, but. Yeah, and at the same time, we've created like a little hire us page that we don't promote very often, but when someone hits us with a question like three or four times, you know, after about the third or fourth time, we send them to the consulting page and we say, hey, if you want us to keep answering your detailed 14 point email, please, consider consulting fee. Yeah, and I think that's completely reasonable. You know what I mean? Sure. Our seventh point. So you've done, let's say you've done some free work for someone, or you've been interviewed on a podcast, or you did a guest post on a blog. You don't want to just let that relationship kind of fizzle out. So a great thing to do is, you know, a couple weeks later, a month later, if you happen to come across something that's interesting to them, or actually, if you don't, it's good to like reach out and try to find some content that's relevant to them or their audience, share it with them, right? Get in touch and say, you know, hey, you know, was so excited to do the guest blog post with you, you know, five weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I came across this. I think your audience would be really interested in it. Or I was gonna put this post up on my blog, but I thought maybe I would share it with you and your audience. I think it speaks to them, right? And like keep that relationship going by providing more value to them. And this can go right back into the systematizing thing, right? Where you have follow-up flags for yourself to remember to go back to these people and talk to them again. And not because you're trying to game the system or anything like that, just to remind yourself because you can't, you know, it's hard to remember when you have all these connections. Out. Yeah, you don't want to like do all these, make all these connections and then let them die on the vine. Oh. I mean, connections need to be nurtured, right? Right. Uh, for a great person that's great at guest posting, guy kills me, is uh, Tom from leavingworkbehind.com. That guy's good, man. I see him guest posting like anywhere and everywhere. He's all over the place. So he's great at reaching out. I don't know if he does this or not, but the follow-up, if he can follow up on those connections he's making and expand them and help them with content, they might be able to help him with content. I mean, he's really setting himself up for success. Last little point, this is like, I guess, 7B. (laughs) The eighth point would be set up Google alerts for your business name, for your personal name, for your business name. And anytime you get a mention, stop by their blog, stop by their podcast, stop by and say thank you, you know, read a couple of their posts, mention the ones that you liked or didn't, generally the ones you did like, but like kind of just check in and say hi and thanks. Yeah, try to use different combinations of, and maybe even spelling mistakes of your name, because I found that for like Magnati, people spell it wrong all the time, and sometimes I do get mentioned other places, and I'd like to check that out. Yeah, I mean, when you're starting off your blog, you're not gonna get a ton of mentions, right? I mean, yeah. you're brand new, you know, your blog, your business, or whatever, your product. When your product gets mentioned, go there and thank them every single time. You get a comment on your the blog page on your product site or whatever, reply every single time, thank them every single time. You, you're hardcore about this. Like, if there's a mention of AdSense and Flipper somewhere, you. Like I could go across the internet and leave you little personal messages as long as hey, they're like and slippers and they're like at random places across the world and you would read all of them. Yeah, you're posting on some motorcycle forum yeah. and but hey Justin, ads and slippers. Yeah. like, hey man, you what's going Yeah, no, but I think that's important. I mean, like you read uh, some of the people that are, have done ridiculously well, like Gary V, right? And he was commenting and responding to comments like all the time. I mean, someone like Mark Cuban, right, responds to email. I mean, I'm not sure how much he can do it personally himself anymore, but I mean, he'll spend you know a couple hours and just knock through some emails that he's got. He does that today. He has a billionaire, right? I mean, so it's those personal touches that really will help make connections with your customers, with your readers, with your listeners that other people aren't doing. Sure. So that's it for the heart of this week's episode. Let's get right into our tips, tricks, and plans for the future. 
the AdSense Flippers podcast continues. So our first trick comes straight from John. What's up, buddy? What you got? Yeah, codeacademy.com. Awesome, awesome website. If you have ambitions to learn any sort of web development or programming, a good place to get started. Uh, you're going to spend probably, I don't know, 40 to 200 hours learning one of the languages on there. I think they have Python and JavaScript right now. But uh, I heard a complaint somewhere on the internet a while back, I don't remember where it was, but someone was complaining that they went through like all the tutorials and then they still couldn't build any sort of application or anything. I mean, it doesn't work that way. Like it's an introduction to a language. You still have to invest a lot of time up front to, to master that. Yeah, but at least it'll teach you the syntax. Yeah. It'll get you going. You'll be able to read and edit code. Yeah. I mean, that's so helpful, just being able to move around in a scripting language or anything like that. Yeah. Knowing the syntax helps. Even if you don't want to be a programmer, if you're just if you're managing programmers, just so you can read some of what they're writing and doing, you know, really valuable. Yeah, 40 hour tutorial is great, but the thousand hour rule still applies, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're gonna gonna have to put some time in if you really want to get it down. Second point, and I want to mention this, because something I think we want to try out is uh, Clay Collins' lead player. I mentioned him earlier. He's great, runs the marketing show, but he created a video, and here's basically how it works. A video's up playing, a couple of things it does, it removes the related videos on YouTube videos, so if you put it on your site, you won't have the related where you get like a loss where they click on related videos and forget about whatever it is you're talking about. But it also allows you to put like an email opt-in in the video itself. Right, so you can put like messages, polls, these types of things into the video itself. One of the, I think, more irritating things you can do with it is you can actually stop the video like halfway through or whatever, and they can't continue playing the that's video. That's brilliant. It's kind of crappy, but it's brilliant. Until you put the yeah, until you put your email. I think that's kind of slimy a little bit, but <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the tool itself is pretty interesting. If you want to check it out, there's a great review for it on SmartPassiveIncome.com. It's the lead player review. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. I think we're going to end up buying it ourselves. Joe's looking at me like, oh, spin, man. No, don't spend any money. But yeah, I think we're going to pick it up and I'm going to play with it a little bit. Great. So that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank you for having a listen. This is episode 31. We'll be back in another week or two with episode 32. You can check us out on Twitter at AdSense Flippers and we'll see you around. Bye-bye, everybody. See ya. You've been listening to the AdSense Flippers podcast with Justin and Joe. Be sure to hit up AdSenseFlippers.com for more. That's AdSenseFlippers.com. Thanks for listening.